So we're going to take a look at section 6.1 from your textbook, which deals with simplifying rational expressions. So we have about four examples that we'll go through in this video. One thing that you're going to want to note is um, main things that you're going to want to be aware of is you're going to want to simplify the numerator. So in other words, clean it up wherever you can. Or um, And the second step would be to simplify the denominator. Finally, once you do all of that in terms of simplifying it down, you'll want to also factor both the numerator and denominator. And then finally, we'll reduce. Okay, so those are the four main steps that you should keep in mind. So in this particular example, let's first focus on the numerator. And we'll take a look at that one that I'm kind of highlighting in red. So the first thing that you guys should recall is the order of operations. I have a 3 plus 4 located in a quantity, or in other words, between a set of parentheses. And you should ask yourself, well, can I add 3 plus 4 together and be done with it? Yes. So 3 plus 4 is 7. And then the a just follows naturally with it. And then we move over to what we have in the denominator, which in this case is 24 minus 3. So again, we have a constant value minus a constant value. We've been adding and subtracting since we were in elementary school. So if we do 24 minus 3, we get 21. And finally, when we take a look at this, we should see if we can reduce things down. So you do want to kind of pair these off. So in other words, go ahead and take a look at your constant values that you have here. I have a 7 in the numerator and a 21 in the denominator. Can I reduce that fraction down? And yes, we can. So we could reduce that down to a 1 3rd. The A follows. So there are a couple ways that you can present your final answer, or actually a few. So this is one way. Another way that you can write this is just A over 3, because 1 times A is just A. Or you could also write this as 1 third times A. So you can move the variable next to the fraction. Any three ways of presentation at this point are acceptable. They all are communicating the same thing. I would say that the bottom two are preferred for presenting your final answer. So let's kind of up the ante. And now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, x squared minus 9 all over the quantity of 2x plus 3 minus the quantity of x plus 6. So to begin, let's start working with what we have in our numerator. So this x squared minus 9. So hopefully what you're seeing here is that this is a difference of two squares. x squared is obviously a square of a value, and then 9 is the result of squaring 3. So we can go ahead and say that this is x plus 3 times the quantity x minus 3. Okay, And then that will be all over. what we have going on in the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and do a few, of, a few extra steps. So usually what I would just write or kind of figure out in my head, I'm going to leave on the paper so that you can follow every detail. So I have a quantity minus a quantity. So again, when you look there, you have this minus sign. and in front of a set of parentheses. That should indicate to you that you're going to want to distribute that negative to each term in order to break down those parentheses. So from here, we would have 2x plus 3 minus x minus 6. Okay. Technically, if you're not sure why the uh, parentheses disappear behind the 2x plus 3, 
It's because there's a positive sign in front, and really if you distribute a positive one to each term, it's left unchanged. One times anything will result in that same value. So let's go ahead and clean this up further. I have an x plus 3 times an x minus 3 all over, and if we clean this up, we have 2x and a negative x, so I'm going to combine my like terms, and this is going to give me a positive x. And then I have a positive 3 and a negative 6. That simplifies down to a negative 3. So from here, when, after we've factored, so we've simplified the numerator and the denominator, and we have factored both. Um, what you can notice here is that I have an x minus 3 and an x minus 3. So note that when you guys are reducing, you are canceling out factors and not terms. So if I am going to get rid of an x minus 3, I have to get rid of the same expression in the numerator and the denominator. So my final answer here simplifies down to just, I have an x plus 3. Next question. I have an x cubed minus 8 all over an a x plus x minus 2a minus 2. So first off, we should kind of note that the numerator x cubed minus 8, I can't simplify anything down because x cubed and 8 are unlike terms. a x plus x minus 2a minus 2, none of them have a common factor, so I'm not going to be able to factor anything out. And all of them are slightly different from each other, so I can't combine these terms. They're all unlike. So let's focus first on our numerator. So we have an x cubed minus 8. And hopefully what you guys are noticing is that this is a difference of two cubes. Okay? One way that you should remember how to think about that is that you have a difference, hence the minus sign. and you have two terms. So that's kind of the structure that you have for a difference of two cubes, a difference of squares, um, and then, of course, we also have the instance of a sum of two cubes, but here we have a subtraction sign. So first off, let's go ahead and identify what my first term and my last term are in order to easily factor this. So in order to figure out what the first term would be, we, ha we want to ask ourselves, what do I have to cube in order to get x? And the answer would be, well, I would have to cube x to get x cubed. For our last term, or 8, what do I have to cube in order to get 8? And the answer to that would be, I have to cube 2, because 2 times 2 is 4. And then if I multiply another 2 into that, 4 times 2 gives us 8. So I'm going to write our general structure above it so that I can just kind of naturally follow. So this is my first minus my last times my first squared plus my first times my last plus my last squared. Okay, So from here, I just drop everything in. So my first minus my last term times the quantity of my first term squared plus my first times my last term, which will give me 2x, plus my last term squared. So that would be 2 squared, or I can simplify that down to a 4. Now let's spend a little bit more time on the bottom portion, or my denominator. So I have ax plus x minus 2a minus 2. So hopefully what you guys are seeing here is, well, first off, ask yourself, how many terms do you have? And we should have four. So I have ax is my first term, x is my second term, 2a is my third term, and 2 as my fourth. Note that terms are separated by addition and or, well, addition or subtraction signs. So from here, we're going to go ahead and couple these. So here's one couple, here's another couple. And we want to start factoring out a greatest common factor between the couples. So between ax and x, I can remove an x, which would leave me with a plus 1. And for our second group, I have a negative 2a minus 2. So hopefully you guys are seeing that I can pull the 2 out, but also note that technically this lead term in your couple is a negative 2a. So I want to pull a negative out with it. 
from here, that's going to leave me with a positive a, since I'm going to factor out a negative 2. And then this leaves me with a plus 1. So take a step back. Take a look at your denominator. If you are factoring by grouping, are you on the right track? And if so, see if you can answer the following question. How do you know that you are factoring by grouping correctly? Hopefully the answer that you're saying is, well, because I have an a plus 1 in my first term, which is this x times a plus 1, and I have an a plus 1 in my second term. So let's continue. So now I still have what I have in my numerator. I've already factored it out. There's really not much I can do with it at this point in time until I can finish work on my denominator. So since I have an a plus 1 in both of those terms, I can again go ahead and factor that out since that's something that they have in common. And this leaves me with an x minus 2 left over. Lo and behold, now that we've kind of factored everything out and simplified everything as far as we can, note that there is an x minus 2 in the numerator and an x minus 2 in the denominator. So then my final answer is going to be x squared plus 2x plus 4, all over a plus 1. Okay, I'm done here because I have an a plus 1 in the denominator, but I can't cancel anything out because I don't have an a plus 1 in my numerator. Much likely, my, or much the same as I have an x squared plus 2x plus 4 in the numerator, but I don't have that same expression sitting in the denominator, so I can't cancel that expression out. So here is my final answer. In our last example from 6.1, we have d minus c over c minus d. So it would not be correct to just go through and say, oh, look, I have a d and a d, so I'm going to cancel those out, and I have a c and a c, and I'm going to cancel those out. You don't want to cancel term by term, okay? So recall that terms are the values that are separated by addition or subtraction signs. You want to cancel out factors. So if I'm going to cancel this out, I'm going to want to make sure that I cancel out a d minus c with another d minus c. So I'm just going to rewrite the problem, and we're going to start fresh. Okay, so just note that how I have it up here, this is wrong. So do not do this way. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and look at the correct way now. So wouldn't it be nice if I could rewrite this problem? And because of what we know about rearranging and manipulating expressions, we are able to do this. So I'm going to leave the numerator alone. But I'm going to go ahead and move the negative d to be my lead term. So I'm going to move it this way. So I have a minus d, and this c here is positive. I don't see the positive sign just because it's kind of redundant to write it. So if I don't see a sign in front of a, a term, it's positive. So I have a negative d plus c. Well, it's getting really close. Uh, I've got them lined up, and the only issue that is standing in my way are the signs that I'm contending with. Well. In order to get beyond that, again, I'm going to just keep carrying through my numerator. All of my work right now is centering on my denominator. I'm going to go ahead and factor out a negative. So if I remove a negative, my negative d is going to become a positive d. And then if I remove a negative from my positive c, it gives me a negative c. So from here, now I can go ahead and cancel d minus c will cancel out with d minus c. And really quickly ask yourself, OK, well, I've canceled everything out. What is left over other than this lonely negative sign? Well, when I clear everything out from a fraction, kind of think about it this way. If I had a 2 over 2, what does that simplify down to? Well, that becomes a 1. So this becomes a 1 over a negative 1. Or we could just simply write this as negative 1. 
So these are a few examples from section 6.1, which, which dealt with simplifying radical expressions. Again, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or come visit me during office hours.